to start off with uh, can you explain uh, in the india market your food business volumes were impacted now what is the reason behind the same is it due to inflation so charlie let me split the india food business into two pieces right the india food business is composed of salt which is our uh, uh, how do i say our uh, uh, business which we have been carrying forward and there is a set of businesses which are building going forward which is sampan soulful ready to eat all that comes under the india food salt was slightly soft this quarter in terms of volume but you have to remember two important things number one we are cycling a q4 of last year where volumes grew by 21% so it was on a very high base the other reason for the volumes a bit of softness is on salt we've been seeing significant inflation come through and we have taken significant amount of pricing over the last 9 uh, months so we have effectively moved from 21 rupees a kilo end of june to april was the last uh, in, uh, i mean latest increase that we have taken where we moved to 25 rupees a kilo right so there's been a 19% increase and every time in salt historically in this category the minute you take up pricing the channel down stocks on all the other businesses i think volumes are doing well in fact sampan by uh, value grew about 30% uh, in last quarter soulful is starting from a zero base soulful uh, it took some time for us to integrate the business but in the last 2 or 3 months it's been growing at triple digits said every time we've taken up the price increases we see a little bit of softness i would think it will come back in this quarter have you been able to pass on the lower prices in tea to the consumer and uh, uh, why is uh, revenue still impacted in the category if you could please explain that yeah so if you look at uh, overall uh, uh, india uh, beverages if you look at it our revenue was negative 1% right which is effectively telling you that as the tea prices are softening up because our volume was still up by 2% yes. but uh, uh, value was down by uh, 1% right so it is primarily uh, on account of the fact that uh, we have been making sure that we are providing competitive value to the consumer but in some some of our tea brands where tea pricings have been softer we have moved uh, down for example in agni we moved pricing down uh, in some geographies in premium we moved the uh, pricing down you have had very good margin performance in the quarter when uh, the rest of the sector actually has struggled with margins actually they either managed flat margins or it's that bit under pressure uh can you please explain how you uh, manage this kind of performance on the margin front number one is uh, the fact that the three big categories uh, that we have uh, the, or the three big commodities that we buy are coffee salt and tea for us uh, apart from salt where it, we might still have small movements uh, most of the uh, commodities whether it is coffee or tea are looking to be range bound right now and therefore we've taken corrective pricing actions as we've uh, seen in the last 6 to 9 months the spike in commodities has luckily for us has happened in uh, commodities which we are not overly reliant on number 2 is making sure that execution and volume growth continue the volume momentum continuing despite taking price increases i think this is the other piece which has helped mitigate margin pressure uh, the only thing i would leave with is the inflation that happens on freight logistics packaging material hits me as much as any other fmcg player and there we'll have to do some puts and takes to make sure that we are sort of steadying the boat as we go forward in your international markets performance especially in t uh, there's been pressure i agree or uh, you very uh, uh, you pointed out that there's been uh, movement mobility has increased in these markets and that's why out of home consumption has picked up in home consumption has uh, actually taken a hit but uh, what is your strategy from your on to improve at least black tea consumption in these markets for the international markets i would split it again charlene into two or three different pieces yeah a we've got a coffee business and a tea business right yes. the us is completely coffee so roughly i would say about half of my business is coffee or maybe 45% of it is coffee and the balance is tea now in coffee we broadly about stable market share uh, and we been taking uh, pricing up in line with coffee prices and with the rest of the industry to put margins back on shape and coffee prices like i said are broadly range bound so now it will go back to driving volume through execution 
Uh, I think the bigger opportunity for us is in driving K cups uh, versus bags in the US. So that's one piece. On the tea front, uh, again, uh, the uh, broadly the tea uh, market has normalized, and uh, uh, the trends that we are seeing is broadly what used to be pre-COVID, uh, where black tea is sort of uh, I would say flat to slight bit of a negative, but the growth still happens in fruit and herbal and specialty. The big thing that we're doing in international is we're following the three brand strategy, where whether it is in the UK or in the US, we're putting uh, Tetley, Good Earth and tea, tea Pigs under the same portfolio and starting to expand. While we uh, sort of build up brand image and improve execution, including promotions in Tetley and Black Tea, I think the growth, big growth opportunities are in the fruit and herbal and speciality. And uh, that is where we are focused. Starbucks, uh, I think, had a strong opening of stores in the previous quarter. Uh, will this continue for you going ahead? So let me put it this way. Starbucks, for the full year, we opened 50 stores, uh, out of which 23 opened in the last quarter. Now, it is not that 23, all of them, the work started from zero and everything finished in the thing. Remember, for a significant portion of time, we were either not allowed to work or did not want to work. I would say the background work was done to a large extent in many of those stores, and we, it was just about doing that final dash and uh, getting the stores open. Going forward, we have ambitions of accelerating store growth in India. In the Indian market, uh, your um, uh, modern trade con contribution, if I'm not mistaken, has crossed 1,000 crores, as stated in your uh, presentation. Quick commerce, so if you could touch upon that, and even uh, in the previous quarter, you talked about D2C brands and launching more D2C brands. If you could give me an overall view on how the modern trade and the e-commerce business for you is evolving at this point in time. So modern trade for us grew at 30% year on year and has crossed uh, 1,000 crores right now, right? And uh, especially in uh, uh, our new launches, right? our new businesses, whether it is Soulful, whether it is Tata Q, or whether it is Sampan, in all of them, we are seeing disproportionate share and volume growth in uh, modern trade. Uh, I think modern trade, the catch is to make sure we can execute much better and continue to drive the momentum. The fact that the consumer still continues to shop online despite modern trade opening, Kirana's opening, so 7.3% is what we exited our e-commerce uh, contribution, and it continues at that level. Now, the challenge is move it to a 10% for us, and that's what the team is working on. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for your time, and all the best, sir, for uh, the next financial year. Thank you. Thanks, Shari. Thank you. If you like this video, share it, and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views, and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and LinkedIn.